I've got a, another co-host here. Right. With me. Yeah. You know, Freddie, there's one thing I've learned by watching your ministry and you sending these marvelous men and, and women to us from the Native Americans that we owe a big, this country mm. owes a big apology to these people yep. because it's not what we were taught in the history books. Yep. Uh, yeah, what's true. going on. So all I can say is uh, to these gentlemen, forgive us. Maybe this nation will come to this realization that what we did to you, as you sow, as our book says, so shall you reap. So forgive us, okay? Yeah. I'm surprised that you'd even want to be on one of these stations, to be honest <laughs> with you. But we thank you for coming to be with us. Why don't you introduce them properly? All Ready? right, I'll do it. <laughs> Right here, sitting next to you is my dear friend, evangelist Bill. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you nobody to love. Red Bear. Red Bear. Bill Red Bear. <laughs> How this brother? Glad to hear you here, yes. brother. <laughs> and sitting next to him is Brother Adolphus Kootenay. Brother Kootenay is from God bless you, brother. Alberta, mm -hmm. Canada. Now, Brother Kootenay is a member of the Nakota. Is that right? The yeah. Nakota uh, Sioux Tribe. And uh, Bill Red Bear is from the Dakota Sioux Tribe um, in Eagle Butte, Mont or South Dakota. South Dakota. Did the two names sound familiar? Is it kind of like Northern Dakota and South Dakota? Is that where we got that kind of stuff in our geography, or is it didn't have anything to do with it as usual? <laughs> Do you know? I have no idea, I but no uh, <laughs> our language is almost the same, but, uh, you know, just that N and L and D, yes, you know, but I can understand what my, you know, what they're talking about. But if I go by our history books, it was all money and greed is what caused a lot of the problems of our nation trying to... Mm -hmm violate every kind of treaty there was mm -hmm. yeah and that's why i said we got to get all this mess streamed out yeah mm -hmm. maybe we ought to find out which one of them is you were saying deals with the fact well you deal in deliverance but i think um this situation of of how you know out in New Mexico, well, my grandfather was part of the Oklahoma rush where, you know, guess what happened there again? But, and I remember my stories of my grandfather telling me back in the early 1900s, he went into Indian territory to get cedar post, you know, for the fences and all. But we don't know much about what happened. And we don't know in my generation, we'd have never thought we'd have seen one of you gentlemen carrying a Bible. You know, that's how bad the propaganda's been. Mm -hmm. How yeah. come you're carrying a Bible? Because God is no respecter of person. Amen. Come on. <laughs> so us grandsons of Sitting Bowie, there's hope for us. Amen. Hope for all of us. Hope for all of us. And I believe every Indian nation, there's hope for everyone. How did you come to know the Lord? Well, uh, my dad is a first grandson of Sitting Bull, and that made me great grandson. And my mother, her mother is uh, Julie Arnsher Cedar, and her and uh, Crazy are brothers and sisters. And then uh, I was really brought up uh, ever since I was a little boy, uh, my Indian religion and cultural tradition ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I was more or less brainwashed it into it since, because I, Heard it since I was a little boy. I seen it and I take part in it, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I was a rodeo cowboy and got an alcoholic since I was about maybe 16 years old, you know. And uh, got married when I was 22 years and I was I was years old and I was uh, abusive in my marriage, you know, because uh, I have a lot of pride in my cultures and traditional ways and my ancestors, you know. But 1970, I almost commit suicide because I beat up my wife so bad because of alcohol and running with other women and 
in and out of jail. And was she a Native American? Yes, she's a Native American too. And, uh, and uh, we have two little boys. But I never stayed home like a dad that really loved the kids. And stuff. I never had those experience. But in 1970... You know uh, what, brother? Uh, Indians didn't have a hold on that market. We're pretty bad in that area ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the same old devil. I guess same old devil. Get, get it wherever he can. Yep, yep. He said if we give an inch to him, he'll take it off. That's right. And uh, I almost commit suicide. I was going to commit suicide at three o'clock. You know, I went looking for help everywhere. Everybody said halfway house. But I don't want no halfway house. <laughs> I want all the way. All the way. Because <laughs> I want to change, you know. And you know that, praise God, that when I couldn't find any help, I went back to what our ancestors said was sacred and holy. I was taught in respect the eagle feathered peace pipe, you know, the medicine man and all these things. So I respect it, you know, and all these things. And my last hope. When I was at the matter of life and death, three o'clock, I was in commit suicide, and this is at two o'clock. I want to live, and I wanted to change. You know that my last hope was I, my eagle feather peace pipe. I cried out to the peace pipe that day, and I found out that what our ancestors said it was sacred. I found out that a peace pipe was just an old dead dry wood that not, cannot change you when you want to be changed. Mm. I cried out to the eagle feather. Same way, there's no life in it. It's no different from a magpie feather. And praise God. But Jesus, it, they told me, Jesus, white man's God. But you know, praise God, that uh, my brother told me, there's a man that lived where he's worse than you, but he's changed. Go see him. You know, so I went to him, and you know, that praise God. He said, Bill, come on in. He said, uh, uh, I've been waiting for you all day. So I said, how could that be? I said, my brother just told me 10 minutes ago who you are, where you live. And you know, uh, he said, Bill, this, I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. He said, I cried before God. Uh, Four o'clock this morning, the Lord spoke to me and says, you take a day off and fast and pray. I'm bringing my chosen today. And he said, when you knock on my door, the Lord spoke to me. He's here now. That's why I said, I was waiting for you all day. And you want to tell me all about your problems, troubles? So I did, you know. Glory. And when I got through, he said to me, Bill, he said, what you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought I was a tough cowboy that never chicken out or shit a cheer or back out on anything. But when I heard the name of Jesus, I fell flat on my face. Glory. And cried God. out, praise God. And I, I cried from down deep within me. I cried out, praise God. I, I, and he knelt down, cried with me, said, Bill, repent of your sins, he said. So I said, Lord, I'm, a, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Lord, if there's hope for me, please save me. You know, and he said to me, Bill, ask him to come into your life. I said, Lord, you come into my life and you change me. And praise God that just the seconds of my mind, my wife left me. And I praise getting a divorce. And just the seconds of my mind, my wife came into my mind. And a voice spoke to me and says, your wife will come back in three days. She will get saved. That was Thursday. And Sunday morning, I went to church and I gave my testimony how the Lord Jesus delivered me and set me free. And praise God, they made altar call and they, Somebody hit the altar, cried, gave herself to the Lord, and here it was my wife. It was your wife. Yeah, my wife. Just Glory like the boy said that. Three days later. Three days later, she got saved. The best partner I ever have was my wife. Mm -hmm. She stand with me through sick and sin. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And I just thank God that, that he saved me. Praise God. And I, after that, I got filled with Holy Ghost. That's good. I got filled with Holy Ghost on a Thanksgiving day. I'm Everybody. Glad, I'm glad you weren't in one of those churches like I grew up says that don't work no more. <laughs> Praise God, you know, everybody said to me, Bill, you're going to be a preacher. And I just said, what have I got myself into? I don't know nothing about this, how to walk in it and how to talk. And I don't know nothing about this gospel of Jesus Christ, you know. 
And the Lord took me to book of John, that how that the Lord said he will send another comforter. He will teach me and guide me to all truths. And I said, well, I got to have this. You know, I, gotta, I need this Holy Ghost, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, praise God, I went to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2, where the day of Pentecost, how did uh, people got filled with Holy Ghost? They're speaking in another language as the evidence of, you know, being filled with Holy Ghost. And you know, they were led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And the book of Romans said, uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. I want to be led by the Spirit because the book of Acts, how the Lord spoke to his uh, disciples. They were led by the Spirit of God. And you know, you got to pay a price for it if you want to be led by the Spirit of Amen. God. Amen. I cried and I fasted and studied the Word of God for days and days. I cried half of the night, speaking in tongues, praying, praise God. And one day... The Lord taught me how to be led by His Spirit. Good. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not preaching this gospel of Jesus Christ through my intellect or Azer degrees. Uh, all I have was the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. <laughs> and the Word of God. And the Lord spoke to me and said to me, that's all you need. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise Amen. God. I just thank God. And ever since then, that I found out that what God delivered me from the Indian religion, my cultural tradition, peace pipe, eagle feathers, it don't fit in here. It don't work in here. It don't fit, praise God. You know, praise the Lord. I try to mix Indian religion in here. It don't, fit, it don't work. Bill, mm -hmm. I know the Holy Spirit's telling me mm -hmm. that through television, mm -hmm. there are some Native Americans tonight, mm -hmm. and they're asking you, well, how how, how can this help me, uh -huh. this white man's religion you're talking about? Amen. Look in that camera right there and just yeah. tell them what to do. Amen. Praise God. The first thing you do is praise God to bury that old nature. The book of Romans chapter 6 talk about uh, the water baptism, baptism that praise God that we buried. And praise God the day that... Uh, got saved and I went to Croatia to Montana or the little big horn, uh, my grandpa sitting bull and a uh, 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 custard block horns. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, the Lord sent me back there in a little big horn river and there I buried, I was baptized and I was, I buried that old nature of my grandpa sitting bull, grandpa crazy horse. Right I there. buried that and I come out of there newness. Mm -hmm. I break the generation curses like the praise God book of Exodus 20 verse 5 talked about. The iniquities of the third or fourth generation. Praise God. I break away from my ancestors, the traditions and cultures and the ancestors. I, I break away from all those iniquities of the third or fourth generation. I break away from them. Praise God. It, not, it didn't make you any less of an Indian, did it? No. It made you more of a More. Yes. Praise God. And that's the downfall of all a lot of native Christian people that they don't break away from their cultures. Praise God. This is why, praise God, that Jesus came and says, the prince of this world came and I have nothing in me, he said. Praise God, there's a day coming we're going to be tested. Uh, if there's a little bit of Indian, Indian cultural belief is still in us, it's going to rise up, praise God. It's going to rise up in us. And this is where if we don't die and, out completely. And, and what happens when that rises up, Bill? What do you mean? Praise by God. That? If it rises up, there's a lot of preachers today, folks. A lot of Christians today, as soon as the powwow season on, they're gone. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. Because mm -hmm. I used to be, uh, spend all my time in the powwows, but rodeos. But uh, the day I got saved and baptized and filled with Holy Ghost and praise God, you know, that I, I can't even go back to those things anymore. The Holy Ghost warned me. It's, it's a no, no, praise God. I got to listen to the Holy Ghost, praise God. And that's the only way. Praise God, if you listen to uh, someone did, else. Did uh, you get delivered of the alcohol? Oh, yes. Just like that? Just like that. All the craving is gone. Praise God. I was tested uh, three days after I got saved. I was tested. We used to have big parties, big alcohol, and praise God, women, drinks, and everything come to my house. And you know, when my wife came back, and my two boys sitting on each side, and my wife, Sunday afternoon, we had a good uh, dinner. My wife cooked a 
chicken dinner and fried uh, mashed potatoes and fried chicken and all these good things and we sit down to eat and I prayed and I cried because I got my family back and my boys are at peace eating and my wife was a and you know that priest got big picture window over here and here there's a car pull up and there was a case of beer and all the guys the rodeo cowboys that I used to run around as a woman that I used to hang around us they're all coming towards my house with cases of beer and alcohol you know okay they said open up Bill it's a like party time you know the Praise God, I looked over there, and my wife looked over there, and she put her fork down, and she had said like this, and I could see a million things going through her mind. Mm -hmm. And says, I thought you said you'll never drink. I thought you, you know, said you'll never have party here. And all the things, and my boys are looking at it, stared at my face, and I could look at them and says, Daddy, are you going to hit Mama again? Daddy, are you going to wow. drink again? Daddy, are you going to jail again? Daddy, do we go, with, go to Grandma's? Do we stay with Grandma? And all these, you know, run through her mind. And I just looked at her as the head of the household, praise God. Shall I let the devil in and destroy my home again? Or shall I let stop him at the door? And I got, that's me, up to me to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, praise God, if you're not delivered completely from all these things, uh, you'll let him in. Mm -hmm. But praise God, I got up and I went to the door and I opened the door and says, I'm sorry, my friends. I said, uh, you take your women, so you take a drink somewhere else. Uh, I'm a Christian and we're serving Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. I closed the door, locked the door, and I came back and I sat down. They all cussed me and took off and... My wife, my boys jumped up and they grabbed me on each arm and says, Daddy, we love you. Daddy, we're going to stand with you. Amen. We praise God. We're on your side, Daddy. And my wife jumped up and she put her arms around me, cried. And then she said to me, honey, I know now you mean business with God. I'm going to submit to you and I'm going to be reverent and I'm going to stand back behind you 100%. Praise God. What's and happened was, in all those years since then? Praise God, I, we serve God together. You know, we both fill with Holy Ghost. We study the word together. We pray in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit of God every night, two, three hours, and we fast it together. And you know, we're not only one in the flesh, but we were one in the spirit, one in the mind, one in the heart. Amen. When God speaks to me, God speaks to my wife. Praise God. And uh, hallelujah, the Lord sent us out to Canada all over. We have nothing. Praise God, I have that good job, paying job. I worked there 13 years. Uh, the Lord spoke to me one day and told me to go up to Canada. And praise God, I gave up, I dragged out my furniture out in the street and just take them, take them. Praise God, I gave everything out and just take them out. And me and my family, we went up there. And we've seen the revivals break out all over. Praise God, the little place called Dakota Plains. Uh, there's a people who fasted and pray because there's a lot of alcohols, and drugs, and uh, praise God, suicides and everything, that the Christian people cry before God. They're fasting and praise that God sent someone. We need deliverance. You know, the Lord sent us there. And then, praise God, we go from houses to houses. People get delivered, set free from Indian religion, cultures. They heard that testimony. People break and burn up all the rituals and all the things. And, boy, we had a revival break out. Amen. <laughs> praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. There's a Satan strongholds in every reservation, and you've got to break through that. Praise God. And it takes a price to pay. Praise God. But the Bible says, uh, weapons of a warfare is not carnival, but mighty through God, to pulling down the strongholds. Praise God. And ever <laughs> since then, I enjoyed myself serving God. Brother Bill, you mentioned <coughs> peace pipe several times. Mm -hmm. If there's a Christian, they're, they're a Christian family, but they still have their peace pipe or they have an eagle feather, what's wrong with that? Praise God that uh, these things are, <clears throat> some of them are dedicated to the spirit world, that the evil spirits are attached to themselves to these things. If you have these things in your home, their spirit have every rights to come into your home. Because they've been be, dedicated, is yeah, that? Yeah, to the, to the spirit world, I mean, it's, they come with them. Uh -huh. And these, that's why I have to uh, get rid of everything. And you know, today I noticed that a lot of Indian people 
Praise God that I really hang on to these things because it was handed down to generation. Grandpa is a medicine man, and you know, these things are, they treasure these things because it's a gift from a, you know, but it's a spirit that attached to themselves. This is why there's a lot of sicknesses and disease uh, and a lot of disobedience and rebellious, you know, come from. And in these those things, houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have these things in your home, uh, you know that it is, it'll, it'll trouble your home. You know, I got a son that there, he's married, and his wife was a really a nice, nice lady. She, uh, uh, good job and educated, and yet that they handed, uh, they uh, honored her with an eagle feather with all kinds of traditional ribbon uh, on it. And they said, this is a sacred, you keep this, and evil spirits and everything will be, you know, but uh, you know, that's a lie from the devil. She took it and they, she kept it. And when they got married, uh, they couldn't even come together. There was a battle. And uh, I talked to them about it, and I bring it out into Indian religion. And here, you know, she got up, and she went into her bedroom, and she brought it over, and she said, is this the reason that uh, me and my husband, we couldn't, uh, you know, every little thing to argue, even the spill milk, and their kids are rebellious and everything. But that day, they want to get rid of that. When they got rid of that, there was always a sicknesses and kids are fearful and f kids are, couldn't even sleep at night and they were have nightmares and they were sick and they were rebellious, disobedience and everything. When, when I got, they got rid of that, praise God, that, that family just come together like this. They were, they were, they, it, I, I could see that the devil left that place. That's the truth of yep. knowing how to get rid of it. Yep. Yeah. I went home, burned it, and now they were they were together. And there's a sister in the Lord. She's and it didn't mean any less that she wasn't honoring her grandparents or anything, anything else. Just, Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, she's not just received it mm -hmm. because it was given to her. But it didn't take anything away from her memory uh, no, of uh, loving them. Yeah. And uh, there is that, praise God, that uh, uh, there's a sister in the Lord that uh, called me way late at night. She's crying and said, uh, Brother Bill, could you pray for me? My heart is about to bust, and I'm really sick. I'm really down, uh, praise God. Uh, and here she, says, here, well, she was saying, the Lord spoke to me and said to me, ask her about her household. So I said, Sister, how's your household? What's going on in your family? Well, he says, I got uh, three boys. One was 30 years old. One was, is a... Uh, 26 or something and uh, one was a uh, so what are they doing in your family what did you, you're they're doing in your home I said one of them was uh, shacking up she said staying with a girl brought her back and they're staying shacking up in my house one of them I said uh, got into Indian religion cultures and she brought sage and uh, eagle feathers and all kinds of rituals she brought him into my house and then one of them got hooked on drugs and he stayed up all night long playing the, uh, watching TVs and uh, uh, praise God and a jukebox was on and played all night long. And I said, uh, so I said, sister, if you want to be healed from this, I said, you better set your household in order. I said, How, what did I do? How did I start it? I said, uh, who paid the light bill? I said, me. Who paid the rent? Me. Who buy the groceries? Me. I said, you're the head of the house, household. You're the authority. Praise God. You lost your authority. You take that authority back in your home. I said, clean up your house, praise God, and God will heal you. And, you know, so she sat down with her kids and said, you, if you're not going to marry her, you take her home. I'm not going to have that, uh, praise God. What do you compromise with your kids? Amen. That's what brings all the evil spirit. devil has every right to come in and put a chaos in your home. So she said, Mama, we're going to move out of here. Said, go on, get out of here. You're of age, and you're, you could be on your own. Go on. And the other one says, you take your peace pipe and all these things. Get them out of here. I don't want them in here. So she took them out. And the other one says, that TV is going to be turned off at 9 o'clock, and there'll be no more hard rock or power out tapes or anything, praise God, in this house anymore. Get them out of here. So he did. And he said, you know, when he set her house with an odor, there's a peace came good, upon her. Good. And she got healed. Hallelujah. And praise God. So we need to sit there. If you want to make it in. That is can be done to every household. Every house should be done. That's right. 
Praise God. Setting them in order. Yep, anybody. Praise God. And there's something I wanted to say. This. I know that there will be a lot of good white brothers came into our reservations, missionaries. And we want them. And praise God that I told them, you come into our reservation, we thank you for the clothes. We thank you for the food that you brought into our reservation. But when you come into our reservation, don't you dare compromise with our the Indian religion. Of God. Amen. Amen. A lot of them want to be accepted. Or a lot of them want to be recognized. So right now, they stand, put their arms around the medicine man, and they take war bonnets and put it on their, and praise God, they take peace pipe or staff, and they said, uh, you're a blood brother now. We accept you. And you know that that, those are, you know, when you, if I mix my Indian religion with this gospel, I'm a false prophet, brother. If I get behind the pulpit with a peace pipe one hand and the Bible one hand, you throw me out, brother, because I'm not the man you want to hear. If you don't, I'll deceive you and I'll take you to hell with me. Mm -hmm. Praise God, because last days there'll be a lot of false prophets will rise up. Amen. Some of them will stand behind the pulpit with an eagle feather on head and <laughs> drums and praise God. Uh, there's no other new way of worship God, uh -huh. brother. The only way is, praise God, to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's the only good way, praise God. And there is no other way to, to make it in. Just mm -hmm. a narrow way. The Lord showed me last night that, praise God, that uh, there's a lot of native and white, and praise God, they're in the valley of decision. There's a narrow way, and there's a broad way that leads to destruction. They were at the valley of decision. Mm -hmm. And praise God, a lot of... I go a lot of places in white churches. And they, everybody says, uh, praise God, that a white man had it one time. They lost it. Blacks had it. Lost, lost. Now the Indians, God's going to use the last day's Indian. Amen. But praise God, he's not going to do it through a peace pipe. Amen. Mm. He's not going to do it through, praise no God. No compromise. No compromise. Hallelujah. Yes. And praise God, that he's going to do it through being filled with the Holy Ghost. Has a good prayer life. Study and meditate. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's going to get, praise God's people get together. Like what he said in a praise God that a second Chronicles about that. He says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, he says, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, he said, and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And the truth will set them free. And they shall know the truth, hear the truth, and the truth will set Amen. you free. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He knows that there's a, the Bible says this, this generation will be so knowledgeable. They're so smart that I don't know what's uh, like that at home or anywhere, else, but uh, I want to go back into my uh, old days, back in the teepee days, back in the wagon days, uh, Grandpa Sitting Bull and all the areas in those days. Uh, praise God, there is no uh, uh, Charmin in those days. There's no anything like that. Mm -hmm. So when they kill a big buffalo and make a big pot of soup, and then two days later when they go down one and go to the outhouse, you know what they do? They grab a bunch of sage. That's what they use for Charmin. But today, generation was so smart, what Grandpa Sitting Bull used for Charmin, they call it sacred and holy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is the very best way I think I have ever heard that. I thought, is he think, saying the same thing I think he's he saying? Where he's going at that. <laughs> <laughs> today, today, they burn those, and uh, when smoke comes, they smudge them. So. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's a lie from That's the right. devil, folks. Is this kind of like the story that you have, brother, also, in your tribe? Yeah, we have. We, this thing's going on in our tribe. Praise <clears throat> God. Now, you were a witch doctor at one time, right? Mm -hmm. So what he's saying, you can say, hey, he's right. Is that yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about you, would you please? Pardon me? Tell us about you and... How did you get out of that hook? Well, it's a, it's a very powerful hook that you're talking about. You yes. Know, it's a spiritual, it's, it's all spiritual. <clears throat> and it's, uh, you know, the word of God talks about how the enemy can do signs and wonders. In the very last days, the word of God says, he's going to even bring down fire from heaven, you know. 
If you're looking for signs and wonders, the enemy's got it, you know. And this is where I was at. I was practicing the Indian religion that was passed down to me from my ancestors. I was born into it. I, was, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't ask for it. The word of God says, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon their children onto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, he said, you know. What he's talking about is the curses and the, the wickedness that our forefathers did comes down to, you know, generation to generation to generation. I was spoken for before I was even born. Really? You know? So what happens is I was born right into the spirit world. I was born at a Sundance, what they call a Sundance, where, where uh, tribes and of different tribes of native come to worship what they call grandfathers. Grandfathers are, are, uh, are spirits, you know, that we, uh, we honor. The, the animal spirits, the fowls of the air, the creeping things of the ground that the enemy uses, you know, to, to beguile us with, you know. And we are told by, you know, our ancestors that this is from God, not realizing it's been infiltrated by the enemy. And this is how I was raised up in all the spiritual activity, in seeing it and communicating with the spirit world. And it's the toughest thing to break away from. The Lord has to bring you down to a point where you have no choice but to turn to him. Like Bill had to. Yeah, that's what happened to me. I was one step away from death when the Lord came and healed me. Uh, tell me, would you? How? Well, what happened was, you know, I got sick. In uh, 1979, I started getting sick. And I didn't have, um, I had so much, uh, what you call, um, confidence in my religion that I thought, well, I'll just go up to one of the healing lodges and get myself healed, you know? And, uh, and now this is where the witch doctors would be and so on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, there's, you see, everything has got a, has got a religion. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're sick, like, say, if I was physically sick, I would go to Mother Earth, what we call Mother Earth. That was my God. See, Mother Earth was my God. She was the provider and the giver of life, mm -hmm. according to, my, to the teaching that was passed down to me. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I take herbs and plants and stuff like this to heal the sickness in my body. But I give honor to Mother Earth. But a spiritual curse, you can't break that by by yourself. You have to use another medicine man or another medicine woman to break that curse. So this is where I was at. And I didn't, you know, and I didn't know that it was a curse until I started going to these medicine men and going to these medicine women to get myself healed. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen, you know, it, two and a half years of traveling looking for that healing, you know. Given everything that you have to pay, like the brother said, it costs you, you a lot of money. Oh, oh it it'll cost you your life. The de the devil came to kill, to steal, and destroy. You know, mm -hmm. he bring it down to nothing. You know, and he was going to take me. I had nothing left. He was going to take my life, and you know, at the very last two and a half years, I was down to just skin and bones. I was crawling. I couldn't stand up. You know, the only thing I could do was talk. You know. And, and it was just, our, you know, a few steps away from, from hell. And you said, you told me you were broke. I mean, you owned some thir nice horses and... Oh, yeah, I had a, I had a string of, uh, you know... Registered horses? Yeah, uh, registered, double registered horses, show horses that I, I pride myself in. And, and, and guns and stuff like this. You see, the, the, the what do you call, uh, the teaching that passed down to me is, if you give what you treasure most in your heart, a healing would come quicker and faster, you know? So these were the things that I treasured. You gave those to the medicine I, men that yes, you were going I to? Yes, I give them all away, thinking that I was going to get healed. I give all my horses away. I give all my guns away. I, you know, my wife, uh, she was, she was uh, you know, uh, working in an alcoholism program as a director. And she had a, a new vehicle, 
And all the monies that, that she made, she used to trying to heal her husband. She traveled on weekends, miles and miles, to take me to medicine men, you know. But after two and a half years, it seemed that it was hopeless. She gave up on the Indian religion. And, you know, one day she, you know, the, she met the Lord. You know? She did. She did, yeah. <laughs> she was near a nervous breakdown. She had, you know, she had enough. She, she happened, it happened there was a, there was a Bible bookstore in a little town that we used to go and shop, you know. That wasn't there the t last time she was there. She was a near, near nervous breakdown. She was going up and down the streets, didn't know what she was doing. Finally parked the vehicle and walked across and went inside that Bible bookstore. And there was two born-again Christian women. Glory. Holy rollers. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> All full of the fire, you know, of the Holy Ghost, you know. Where when you first come to the Lord, you know, you're flying and, you know, you can't stop talking about Jesus. That's you know, right. fanatics, you know, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> Jesus Amen. freaks, you know, Bible thumpers. That's right. <laughs> and they were waiting for my wife. You know, the Holy Spirit brought her there. Today we know that. That time she didn't know why she was there. She didn't even know what a Bible bookstore was when she went inside that place. Really? When she was looking through these books, just lifting up, her mind was a blank. She didn't know what she was looking at. And these two born-again Christian women were watching her, you know. And still stepped up. They never even asked, are you looking for a certain kind of book, you know. She just went up. One of them said she stepped up to, to me and asked me if I knew Jesus. And I had to be honest. She said, I, I didn't know who, who she was talking about. So I said, no. Never and heard it, of him. No, she didn't know who, you know, she didn't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And she, she, right away, you know, she followed up with, would you want to know him? Do you want to know Jesus? You know, well, she had nothing to lose. I mean, he was, she was ready to. So she accepted Jesus on the spot. They led her to the sinner's prayer. You Glory know? to God. My daughter tells me this story. She was there at that time, her and her auntie. And they saw her work across. She couldn't make out what she was happening to her. She wasn't talking, she wasn't doing nothing, just driving around. And then she was gone for quite a while, so they decided to go inside. And there was my wife on the floor, on her knees, and she was rocking like this. She was crying, and she was laughing, and crying, and <laughs> they thought she lost it, you know? <laughs> One of her sister went up there and grabbed her and said, what's happened, what happened to you, you know? She didn't understand that she just got delivered, you know. She got set free from all of the burdens and all the things that, you know, had the devil had on her. And she was released from it, you know. I might well say I got saved that same time because she never stopped praying for me from that time. She started fasting and praying for me. She's, you know, she spent nights inside this church. Overnight she'd fast and spend a whole night with the Christian brothers and sisters praying in the church, you. praying for me so I can get, you know. And I would feel the Spirit, the Holy Spirit around me. And there was a rebellious, murderous, militant spirit inside of me that would tell me that when I feel that spirit coming, you know, hearten your heart, you know, harden your heart, they're praying for you, they're trying to break you down. And, and I would, you know, I would fight against that spirit and it would leave, you know. But after about nine months of this. Nine? You know, nine months of, you know, nine Glory months of this. Glory to God. After seeing my wife, you know, the way she was, she just, you know, she was brainwashed to me at that time, she was brainwashed by the Indian, uh, by the white man's religion, you know, because she forgot all about me, you know, the daily pampering that I got because I was half, I was going to die, that was gone, you know. She looked like she didn't care less if I died, you know. I, I didn't know that she left it to the Lord, you know, take care of me now, you know, and and I would. I was crawling, you know, and she would watch these TV programs, something like this here, and she would, you know, she would uh, say, you know, praise the Lord, you know, sometimes watching it, you know, hallelujah, you know, and... and what did you think? And I thought she was crazy. I thought she went, <laughs> she lost it. The brainwasher totally were, you know, she couldn't, you know, it's, 
And I would laugh at her. And I would laugh and laugh. And I'm hanging on to the wall of this place, holding myself up, you know. And, and, and I, she would watch this one program. This one brother used to cry on that TV program. Every time he came to, he, he would close his eyes and he would cry, you know, praying for people. And I would laugh at that man. I would see if that man had the power that I have. He should come and see me. I said, I have that power. You know, here I was dying. I couldn't see. Like the word of God says, the enemy blind us totally mm -hmm. that we can't see. You mm -hmm. know, why didn't I heal myself? I had all that power. I didn't see that, you know. And then that one day she asked me to come to church with him. See, I was, I was conditioned to hate the white man. You hear like brother, brother too was like because that. Because of the mm -hmm. medicine man tradition. Yeah, the medicine man taught me to hate the white man, the way they treat their ancestors. You know, how they randomly just, you know, at, you know, just for spite and fun shot them and, you know, made fun of them. And, you know, our mm -hmm. ancestors were shot just on, on, on the roads whenever, wherever they caught up to them. And, and we're not uh, talking the 1800s, we're talking 1900s. Boys, <laughs> and yeah, and, and they told, they said they took all our land <coughs> They put us on little, in little square uh, pastures and they keep us in bondage and they just, you know, they promise us all, to give us all of this and, and what did they do? They just don't give us nothing and they're killing us off, you know, and all of this and, that, and the militancy and hate started, you know, developing in my heart, you know? And, and when, when I seen my wife, she was saying this, these beautiful white people, you know, are helping me, you know. And I said to, to her, there's no such thing as beautiful white people. What do you think, <laughs> you know? They're all, be. <laughs> they're, they're all killers. They're, they're all out to steal and to, to kill, you know. There's no, there's no such thing, you know. But I was conditioned that way, you see, uh -huh. to think that way. And, and they were they were genuine born-again Christian people that really loved. Real you know? believers. Yeah. And here I was, I was condemning them because of the way I was brought up, you know. And I couldn't, I couldn't call you guys brothers at that time, you know. Like I wrote in that book, you know, to call, to call a white man brother would be a nightmare. Would be, you know, it would be like a light nightmare to really? me, you know, Boy. at one time. You know, today I laugh with my white brothers, I put my arms around them, I joke with them, you know. and. We talk about the word of God and, you know, it wasn't like that then, you know. But anyway, nine months after she came to the Lord, the Lord and her tricked me into come, going to this meet, to this, to, the, to a church, you know, because I was never going to go, you know. I made up my mind that I was never going to be brainwashed like she was, you know. But she asked me one day out of unawares, you know, you want to go and you know join the service with me, and without really thinking, I said yes, okay, you know. So I went. No, I didn't go. I mean, I I thought well, because I was raised up a Roman Catholic, you know, a nominal Roman Catholic. I was. <laughs> that's all. Because I never I never practiced it. I just grew up that way. And I seen it when I was a kid that they had. Their mass, mass, what they call mass, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock every, every Sundays. And I thought that, you know, they held it on su 10 o'clock every Sundays. So I was struggling, you know, that morning to put on, the, you know, the best clothes I had on. I struggled, I barely had it on, and I waited, you know, to for 10, before 10 so she can come and tell me, give me, take me out to the meeting, but she didn't show up. She was still in the bedroom, you know? I didn't know the service started at two o'clock. <laughs> and then here, here I was. I finally got, I finally got mad it took, uh, and I struggled to take all those clothes off again. And I promised myself I was gonna say no, and I was gonna let her know I said no. You know, I was gonna yell and throw a tantrum and just, you know. And then about one o'clock, she comes out dressed through the nines, and she says, "Hun, are you ready to go then?" You know, and without thinking, I said yes. You know, and mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe that I said yes. You know, <laughs> but they brought me to that service that day. You know, 
And I went to, to observe what these nice white people she was talking about was all about. And I sat at the back of the church, the first place, the first seat I seen, you know, because I couldn't walk. My sons had to bring me in. I couldn't walk. They sat me down, and the person that was up on the, on the platform said, hey, you guys back there, I want you guys to sit. There's a, there's a row of seats in the front here. Go sit here, you know. Already I had that militancy inside of me. Who do you think you are, you know? We're the only ones in this congregation, these native people, you're picking on us, you know. I was mad, but the Lord had me to a point where I couldn't fight or nothing, you mm -hmm. know. So I told my boys, take me up front. I said, I'll, I'll show this uh, cranky, bossy white man what, you know, that he <laughs> doesn't scare me, you know. So He, he tells he, it like it is. Yeah, <laughs> he brought me up front, you know. They brought me up front and just... No, no sooner did I, he sat me down, he, he said, well, there's five people that need uh, to be saved. They need Jesus today, he said, you know. Uh, I want all of you to stand up, you know, and uh, close your eyes and bow your heads. And, all, and that militancy was just rising in me, you know. Didn't, he, didn't this guy see me getting carried from there to here? How am I supposed to stand up, you know? Who does he think he is, you know? I, 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 st I got my wife to hold me up on this side, my oldest son to hold me up on this side. And I stood there, waited for those five people so they can come up front. And, and it, we were standing there with our eyes closed for a long time, you know. And at one time, I can feel somebody push me from the back. I turned around, I looked, and there was nobody pushing me, you know, they were had their heads down like this. At one time, I was pushed so hard that I even took a step, you know? Really? Yeah, I took a step, and I turned, and you know, nobody was pushing me. But we stood there, and one, at one time, I opened my one eye, you know, just to see how many people were standing up front, he said. And I all looked like this, and there was four people standing up there, you know? And they were waiting for the five. fifth, yeah, yeah. They were waiting for that yeah. fifth person. And I was getting mad at that fifth person. <laughs> it should hurry up. You know, I can barely stand here. You know, I'm barely hanging on here. That fifth person should hurry up. What's the matter with that person, you know? And I was really getting frustrated with that fifth person, you know, and getting mad at him. And all, you know, finally it looked like we were going to stand there all day. I whispered my wife, she was to take me up there, you know? <laughs> I thought, well, you know, I would give these guys a rest from standing like this too long. They've been standing <laughs> there for a long time, you know. Little did I know that I was that fifth person that they were waiting for, mm. you know, the Lord. Amen. And when I went up, you know, just before the altar, when I hit that altar, I ran into a spirit that I could mm. never describe. It was a loving spirit. It wasn't like those ugly spirits. I've never met before, uh -huh. you know. And I felt that I'd done something wrong to the spirit. Just like, you know, I slapped my mother or something, and I, you know, I, I, st I started getting choked up, you know, I started feeling. And, and you know, the, as I went further, I, I started crying, I started weeping for no reason. You know, I just felt so bad. Mm. And when they led me to the sinner's prayer, I was just bawling, you Big know. tough medicine man. Yeah, that tough. <laughs> I used to carry guns for white men. I wanted to shoot the white men the way they did to my ancestors. You know, I almost did quite a few times, you know, and I, I didn't have no conscience for them, just like they did to our ancestors. And I was never going to cry in front of people here. I was crying, you know, bawling. And I looked, and I was beside myself because this place was full of white people, and I'm... You know, it's like the macho gun carrying, you know, uh, militant mm -hmm. was yelling at the top of his lungs, crying, you know. And that day I shuffled out of that, without help, after the service, I shuffled out of that church. Two weeks later, I was just as strong as I ever was before. Two weeks? Yes. And that's how I met. After how many years were you sick? Two and a half years of suffering to trying to get the medicine men and women to heal me. Well, that proves how strong demonic spirits are. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the battle started, you see. The battle started. This is the another story that starts because I had all the paraphernalia that was passed down to me to communicate with the spirit world, you see. 
And I had to, I had to, I didn't know I had to get rid of that. The word of God says the old things must pass away. You know, behold, all things must become new. And he means it. Like Paul, you know, he was uh, one of the, one of the Pharisees. Yeah. You know, the top Pharisees who were brought up the same way as I was, just as a medicine man. He was brought up as a Pharisee. He had to give up his, the way he was taught to join Jesus Christ and walk with Jesus. That's what I had to do. I didn't know that. Now see? how did you find out that you had to do this? Pardon me? How did you find out you had to give all this up? By, the, by those same brothers and sisters that were in that church, used to come and visit. They used to follow up on our, on our conversion. Mm -hmm. They came to our res reservation and they visited my wife. And, and, and they, they tell me, do you see all this, the, the eagle feathers that he was talking about, the sweet grass and medicines hanging all over my wall, pictures of, you know, animals that I worshiped and everything. I had my medicine bag with me. I had my peace pipe with me. I had my eagle feathers with me. I had everything with me. And, and, and they would come there and they say, you have to get rid of that stuff, you know? You have to get rid of it, brother, you know? And, and I would get mad at them because you don't know what you're talking about. You know, these things, they got power. I seen this power work, you know? I seen it, you know? And they, you know, that one sister, you know, used to be, used to just, just kind of, in, he always tell me, you have to, you have to, you know, I, he, she really bugged me, you know, and she, you know, it, 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 it got me mad, you know, it used to get me mad, and I used to, you don't know what you, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about, I said, one day I told her all about these spiritual powers, what they do, you know, how they kill and how they destroy people by cursing and, and everything like that. I said, if I get rid of this stuff, I'm going to die. They'll kill me. They'll kill me on the spot. You know, I can't, I can't desecrate this sacred stuff that was passed down to me. I said, I can't get rid of it. I can't. He told me I had to burn it. I can't. <laughs> I, can't. I, can't. I, want, I don't want to die, you know. But she would say, but brother, God is more powerful. She Amen. Say, you know? Amen. And I would say to me, what are you talking about? God is more powerful. Because I didn't know. I wasn't raised up that way, you see. But I seen these spiritual powers kill people, destroy people, cripple people, blind people, you know. Mm. I seen it happen because the word of God says he came to kill, to steal, yeah, and destroy. Yeah, yeah. You know. I used to put curses on people that happened just like that. But I had to, you know, do sacrifices. I had to do ceremonies. I had to give out offerings to the spirit world for this to happen. He has that, that power over me. Which confirms what the Bible said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, and he was the one that's doing all of this and making me think that I was the, medi the powerful medicine man. You mm -hmm. see? The word of God says, you know, he, unto the third and four, not only that, unto the third, the word of God that, you know, we read the, we've been reading it while we had the 10 day, how the spirit, you know, when he comes at it, it's in uh, Matthew, you know, 12, 43, mm -hmm. 44, 45, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he goes out, you know, seeking rest in dry places, like, you know, seeking for another house, a home, for, like, you know, I, they call this home. See, I was taught that they lived in the mountains. They never told me they live here, you know. So I used to go to the mountains to go and fast to gain all of this spiritual power. I didn't know they lived in here. You see, so when I was born, these spirits also transferred to me, mm -hmm. you know. And they lived inside of me. And when I put curses upon them, they were the one that was doing all the, all the spiritual activity, not me. Because, like, all three, four of us sitting here without the Holy Spirit, what do we have? We mm -hmm. have just a, you know, a body, That's you know, right. a piece of dirt that has no power. It's the same difference with when I was a medicine man, without the unclean spirits, I had no power. I had nothing to show me what's going on around me spiritually, because I was a human being. That's the same difference. This is what we're trying, me and my brother Bill here, we're trying to make our native brothers and sisters see that we are controlled by the unclean spirits. We're not controlled. We haven't got no power, you know? You must have had a terrible battle going on inside of you. Oh, I tell you. My wife was battling 
you know, with the spirits coming inside the bedroom at night, you know, he was praying and battling and wrestling with the spirit world while I was sleeping, you know. One night she woke me up. She just was, you know, throwing me around. She said, help me pray, you know. I got up and our bedroom was just cold, just like it was midwinter and we were outside, you know, in our bedroom. And I can feel the shivers and all my, my body was like it was vibrating, you know, my hair was like it was standing up. And there was a something evil, a presence just standing there, you know. And I got down on my knees and I started praying with her. Four hours we prayed before it left, you know. But we didn't see, we're just beginners. We didn't know we had that power to tell it get to it get out. out. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it took time, you know. So after that happened, my wife joined the other brothers and sisters saying, you got to get rid of this, you got to get rid of that. And I had to, you know. The first time I had to get rid of a peace pipe, I thought I was going to die. You know, when I took that, I made a big fire and I took that peace pipe to the fire. I prolonged it. I took my time going out there to Enough prolong there. my life, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I took that peace pipe apart and put it together, and I had a big bonfire going. And, and I, I, the last words I said when I threw that peace pipe in the fire was, God, I said, you better be as powerful as they say you are. Or I'm dead. I said, and I threw it in there, and I braced myself. I thought I was going to get zapped by the spirit world, and I was going to die right there on the spot. But it didn't. Nothing happened. I nothing. stood there for a while, and nothing was happening. So I even opened my eyes, and I even watched my peace pipe burn, and even the rock fall apart, and everything, you know, in the fire, you know. And that gives me an incentive to get rid of my medicine bags, you know, and stuff. When I threw the medicine bag, like afterward, I'm, I'm gonna hear this thing off. So I threw the medicine bag in a fire afterward, something lifted from my, from my place. You can feel just like a heavy blanket was lifted. It was a nice, beautiful day, yet it just like it went brighter, you know? And a peace came down that I never felt before. My kids, my family were standing outside. We all joined hands. We started praising and thanking God for that Glory beautiful God. peace and that, you know. And then after we'd done that, we started taking down all the offerings that we had put up for, to the spirit world. I mean, years and years and years, my place was just decorated with every kind of offering. You know, when we tied this offering in trees. So we had arm loads and arm loads all day long putting it in the fire, you know. And towards the end, at the very end, close to the end of the day, we had two places to go. One was where I had my, my sweat lodge permanently set up in a place just kind of northeast of our place. My wife said, I'll go to where your sweat lodge is. And, and I went the other way. And we had a fire going. That's where we were throwing all the stuff. I went and I came back with an arm load. My wife was, was there already. And there was quite a bit of offerings around that lodge. And I thought, gosh, she's fast taking all that stuff down, you know. So I told you, finish already? She said, no. He said, you know, when I, we had a little garden there. We got, you know, just past that garden, there's, there's a walking trail where I had my lodge set up. And I know I went and did a, I cut out, you know, I went and brushed out a big piece of bush way out in a, in a bush, you know. I used to have it behind my place. My mother said, the dogs are defiling your sacred, like, you know, it's a sacred thing. So I had to take that and place it where there's, you know, nobody can, and dogs and stuff like this don't hang around. And this is where I had it set up. And that little, past that, past that, you know, that, uh, the, uh, the garden, he said she ran into a wall of spiritual power, evil power where she couldn't go through. She was driven back. But I was full of the Holy Spirit, you know. I just received it, you know, and and I and I just walked, you know, to that. And sure enough, you know, greater I, is He. Oh man, I was just when I stepped into that, past that, there's something hit me, just like a rattle. You know, we use rattle. We make it out of of hide, moose hide, deer hide, any kind of hide. 
we put buckshots in it and stuff like this, and we used that to rattle, to summon the spirits, you know. And the spirit would come in to, you know, after we chant and summon them to come. Like, we offered it to come in, and all kinds of spiritual powers would come into our lodges, like, you know, the bear, 